I've incorporated AI in the product development lately, which has been, dude, that's, that's bonkers. I think I already signed up. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Million Dollar Sellers podcast. Today we have an awesome guest on the show. Sometime I've, someone I've known for a while, uh, Brandon Young. He's the founder of Seller Systems, founder of Data Dive. Uh, I believe you're also an eight figure seller these days, right, Brandon? Yeah, we're on pace to do over 30 million this year. Amazing, amazing. And Brandon's done some, uh, you know, you just put on your first, I think that was like your first big event, right? The one that I came down to in Orlando? Yeah, Camp Ecom. That was yeah. our first time doing an annual event. Yeah. And that was a good time, man. I, I really enjoyed that event, came back pretty fired up. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm actually just deep into like, the mo what that event motivated me to really do i'm like deep in it right now <laughs> so it's uh it yeah the, the whole premise of doing that 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 type of event was that you know we've been to a million shows dozens and dozens of conferences literally and um you know we wanted to do something more actionable uh more interactive and more geared towards what level you are and so someone at your level that's already doing seven and seven figures and you know you want to go to eight or 50 million right like what is it you need to do and your training is not on the 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 amazon side you you're already really good at that side of it uh but the the business management side is really hard and it's really hard to figure out uh on your own so we wanted to have a whole section that was just business management training specifically for e-commerce. And on, uh, I think we called it, we, we, we named it wrong. It was like eight figure because the goal was like, you can, you know, use this to get to eight figure. Right. So we had people in there because they wanted to become an eight figure seller, but they weren't quite ready for it. They still needed more of the tactical stuff. Uh, so next year we're going to break it into three, uh, sections. It'll have uh, pre-launch. Uh, two days of pre-launch workshops, product development, sourcing, logistics, and then two days of post-launch, which will all be PPC and all setting up the launch and all that. Nice. Uh, and then on the other side will be the business management. Uh, so that'll be for the executives. Hopefully everyone will start to bring their teams. Uh, a lot of people did this time as well, which was great. But we really wanted to get to a position where people are bringing their teams and getting their teams up to speed and aligned using it as a team building event as well. Yeah, that, that totally makes sense. I mean, cause I think at that, if you're not at eight figures yet, like the idea is to remove yourself from some things and, and really elevate other people to, to take over and hopefully do it better than, than you can do it. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Usually it's not right. Like that's the biggest hang up for a lot of people is that they don't want to let something go because they know they're going to do it better. Yeah. But the goal should always be to just try to get 70 or 80 percent from someone else. Yeah. Right. And sometimes it'll take more than one person. But if you hire two people at 70 or 80 percent, now you're at 150. Right. And and so now now you're OK letting it go. And yeah. you can focus on more more value drivers. And I think that's an important point to mention, because like I know me, I'll get focused, you know, got to get an A player, you know, 110 percent or, you know, I'm, I'm like all or nothing on everything. And it's like, all right, dude, like dial back, you know, get someone in at 70, let some things off your plate and like, you know, keep moving forward. So, um, I really enjoyed that conference. I'm looking to coming back. I think you have an opportunity to do like some cool stuff, man. Like I, I think of old jobs I've had where we did training for like two weeks, you know, like you came in and you were there like eight hours for two weeks role playing and, you know, learning all these things. And, um, you know, I would love to see someone do that in e-com where it's more of like a, a retreat blended with education. I think it's easier for the entrepreneurs to bite into that. Cause like for me, it's kind of all one thing, you know, like what I do in my personal life yeah. and what I do at work. It's really tough to pull yourself away from your business for more than a couple days at a time, but it's needed, right? Yeah. Like you, for, sh for sure. We've got to immerse ourselves to level up. And, yeah. uh, so we're, but that would be sweet. Yeah, that would be cool. Uh, and I, going to an actual camp and getting away for a week would be pretty cool. Yeah. Well, Brandon, I'm sure a lot of the listeners are are going to be familiar with you, but um, you know, why don't you just introduce yourself a little bit? Give a give a, the audience a background on on who you are and and what you're about and what you're doing now. 
Yeah, so the 30-second version would be that um, I was dating uh, my now wife. We started, fi we figured out FBA was an incredible business model, uh, basically leveraging Amazon's billion-dollar infrastructure to be able to scale a business. We just figured out what are what is everything we can possibly send in to sell. So we were doing wholesale, liquidation, uh, arbitrage. And then in 2016, you know, she's originally from China. So we said we should be doing private label. We started firing up private label products, learned a lot of lessons the hard way, um, and really started to solve figuring out like what went right, what went wrong with every product launch and, and realized that a lot of it was in the keyword research and data analysis that we were doing to choose products and how we launched them. And that was, uh, you know, what we started teaching with seller systems, uh, in 20, I'd say 2016, end of 2016, beginning of 2017, we were, uh, in the founding, um, founding class of MDS, uh, and it was us and I don't know, 60, 70, 80 guys, uh, we had gotten together at a couple conferences, uh, Ian and uh, Leo and Andre and, and Fernando and a bunch of really, really cool dudes. Uh, you were you were there. <laughs> Costa Rica, right? <laughs> and so it was just really neat to get everyone together and start to get aligned on what what's working for you. And that was the birth of MDS. A little bit later, I started... Um, with Garland and Max from MDS, we decided to start something that would be more for beginners uh, with an arbitrage mix because they were doing eight figures in arbitrage. Um, we realized after about a year that most people were signing up for for private label and they didn't even want to do arbitrage anymore. Yeah. So we, we parted ways and I've taken uh, seller systems at this point to, uh, you know, 1200 members about a third are new sellers, a third are six figure guys, and a third are seven figure guys. So I'm kind of an incubator uh, for MDS in many yeah. ways because, uh, you know, I still tell people that it's a great, great place to be if if you're at that level. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, I've I've enjoyed being a part of Seller Systems. It's it's uh, definitely very active. Lots of great information in that group, and um, I think I I came in pretty early to Seller Systems. But yeah, I've watched multiple people come in from there uh into mds over the years and they come in strong like i can think of, i think two it was anthony and mo they came in back to back and one uh most valuable member um two yeah back to back so that I'm was proud pretty of cool. that yeah That's pretty cool I yeah gotta, you know mo, mo is a, a a beast so is anthony uh they are just data driven uh super analytical always on top of the latest and, and what's working but really digging into why it works and yeah so and and super super abundant like we teach an abundance mentality in there you're there to help each other right um and you know you're always going to get those guys that could come in and they're quiet and they're only takers uh, we try to avoid that, but it's it's inevitable. Uh, but the majority of the people that join the inner circle, uh, and I think I hope MDS as well, still like because I know you have a you have a system to move people out that if they're not contributing, which is yep. great. Because you, you gotta you, the more you give, the more you receive, man. One hundred percent. Yeah, and they have one of those values at MDS. I do all the new member calls at MDS, and I always talk about the core values, and and we have one uh, around you know giving. And, uh, that's, I say, if you just focus on this one, like everything else kind of just falls in line, you know? <laughs> um, Absolutely. so yeah, it's a big thing to focus on, man. Um, so cool. Thanks for giving us a little bit of a background and, and I'm excited to talk about like some of the, the great stuff you're working on. I know like data dive has been an amazing tool and I know you're really progressing that tool, but let's, let's back up just a little bit and like talk about uh, Brandon Young pre Amazon. I mean, what are, what are some experiences in your life that have, you know, shaped you, uh, to become this person that you are today to take these risks and, you know, do these things that you do. I just, uh, I have entrepreneurship in my DNA and I have many failures, uh, to, and, 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 you know, lessons and that I've learned along the ways, uh, along the way. And it was, I would say 20, I graduated 20, 2004 from college. I started um, at Morgan Stanley as a financial advisor. I had my Series 3, 7, um, 66. Uh, and what I 
what I wanted to do was be in finance, but then my father's business, he was, he was looking to retire. And so they had a wholesale construction supply business and construction supplies is not sexy to me. Uh, I grew up around it and, and to me it was, it was limited, right? It wasn't scalable. I wasn't as excited about it, but at the end of the day, like it was the family business. So I started working in the family business. Um, and unfortunately my dad passed, uh, in 2007. And then we had the financial crisis, uh, which halted a lot of construction. So the business took a hit at the same time my father was passing, but we, we decided to sell it instead of really dig through it. And, uh, so we exited the business. Um, we, from there, I decided, uh, to go back to school and get my MBA. Uh, and I started, I was really super interested in tech startups, entrepreneurship, and I wanted to learn the in and out of financing, angel investing for startups. So I started a micro venture capital club in South Florida, and we grew that to over 1200 members while I was in school. And, uh, I think about that time I was when I met, you know, that was over the course of, um, you know, five, six years. Oh, I also, there was a few year period in there where I was, uh, I was deciding, uh, I wanted to be in the music business. Okay. Nice. And it was just kind of one of those things that was an itch. So I opened up a, a recording studio. I had a couple artists that I was managing, uh, and I had, uh, some publishing, uh, that I was doing for some other songwriters and, um, uh, I guess they would be uh, producers, music producers. And after a few years of doing that is when I went back to school. And then I that and started the club. And then that's where I met my, my now wife. I was investing and consulting in startups. And she wanted to do a startup. She wanted to actually program one. So Jennifer has two master's degrees in computer science. Wow. And she's much smarter than I am. And just luckily she was like, Hey, I want to do a business. And I was at the time I was consulting with a methodology called lean startup. It's a very famous methodology that was created by, um, uh, a gentleman, uh, Eric name escapes me, but he has a whole book on it. And basically it's fail fast, fail cheap. You create an MVP. That's ugly. You go ask your target audience. Would you buy this? What's the pain points of the current solution? And is the pain enough to get them to want to switch? Is your idea good enough to get them to want to switch to your solution? And you can validate products very quickly. And so we did that with half a dozen ideas with, that Jennifer had, and they were all not very good. And then we found Amazon. And we decided at that time we started dating and we decided to start the business together. And we got married uh, a little bit after that, after we launched the private label business. But that's kind of the, the progression. Very cool, man. So it's, you've got some, uh, experience like building a group before, right? Like you did that thing in school where you put that, that group together, which is what you've done with seller systems. So I didn't know that. Um, yeah, I always, I always enjoyed it. I'm more of an extrovert. I always enjoy getting together, networking, um, see the power and getting together and, and your network is your net worth. Right? Yeah. Uh, so mm -hmm. it, it was always, we did three pitch events every single month, one in each county in South Florida. So we did a Dade County, a Broward, and a Palm Beach. And we, in the room, we would have 30 to 70 people, entrepreneurs, uh, investors, and technologists, actual programmers. And people were just striking deals in the room during the networking side. And it was so awesome wow. to see because, you know, you would have three, I would only do like three pitches. And then aside from that, you have people asking hard questions because anyone in the room could ask a question. And my thing was always like, don't be easy on them because someone in this room might cut them a check and not mm -hmm. know the difference. So if you know that this isn't a good idea or if you really want to dig deeper, it's going to help everyone in the room to learn. So we would tear people apart. But at the same time, you were really getting to level up. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, that's such a, a great like exercise to be able to run through like where you just kind of get beat up, you know, or like you have those people that you work with that are like pretty critical of work. Like, you know, they're going to check every little thing and it, it makes you show up at your best. Or, you know, if you can't answer those questions, you know, the next time you're like, I'm going to have my shit together. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like you need those people around you, man. It's such a it's weird being on the other side of that mindset sometimes, right? Where, cause there's like those people in the world who like, oh no, those people are rude. Like that's mean, you know, like you shouldn't <laughs> act like that or ask questions like that. But like when you jump the fence and you get on the other side, it's like, 
you know, holy shit, there's like a whole nother, you know, I'm capable of so much more. And, and, uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You're doing them a favor by, by asking those hard questions, right? Like you, people think you're being mean, but the reality is that's, that's reality. If they're yeah. not prepared to answer that question, they're going to fail. And they're going to waste a lot of their time and their money and other people's money. So you're doing everyone a favor by, Absolutely. by being a part of them. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I agree, man. 100%. It's, um, that's, that's one thing I get a little envious of with other people in our, our, uh, line of business is that I don't really have that group of people here locally, you know, like I've got the, the people I grew up with and, you know, my wife and a couple close friends, but you know, not enough to like go out the door and, you know, Hey, I'm going to go have coffee with Brandon Young, you know, today and then chat for a few minutes or anything like that, you know? So people down in Florida and California and New York, like, you know, that's where a lot of, uh, a lot of you guys are hanging out at. Yeah. It's tough, man. I think, uh, I just had coffee with Ramon the other day. He's awesome. Yep. And, um, you know, I, I do get an opportunity every once in a while and I try to, I try to do that when I can. But most of the time I'm seeing people because I got my, you know, I'm at my office till, you know, last night I was here till 3 a.m. Like we're in the middle wow. of a product sprint. Um, but for the most part, like it's when I go to events, like this coming week we're in Salt Lake City. Mm -hmm. And then later in the month here and hopefully like locally, which is luck luckily, um, is uh, um, Steve Chu's event, Sellers, Sellers Summit, okay, um, which is in Fort Lauderdale. But I'll get... I love, I love to just, you know, be in the same room as people have a drink. Like people are like, Oh, yeah. you throw these events and they're just super casual. And I'm like, dude, that's the, that's the magic. Yeah. Right. You get to step aside with someone for five minutes and catch up with them. It, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the magic happens for sure. Um, man, I want to know what does brand, what's Brandon Young working on at, at 2 AM in the morning in his office? Like, what do you do in the Amazon business these days? <laughs> Yeah, I've had to get more involved again, which is super interesting. I, I was getting, I was losing touch with what the team was doing, and they just weren't delivering at a high enough level. And, um, you know, we were scaling the team up and hitting some, hitting some roadblocks. And I want to aggressively launch some products. So for the first time, I was the 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 real reason I think is I was able to get back to China for the first time in three years. My favorite part of going to China is visiting showrooms and uh, factories, right? And 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 just being inspired by product ideas. So if you go to a show like Canton, if you go to a fair, I'm walking around just taking pictures of people's booths and product ideas, and then I'm digging back. And I'm I'm now my team's grown to a point. When I was there three years ago, my team in China was maybe maybe three or four. Now it's over twenty, right? So I have people on my product development team that I can send a product idea to and say, run a data diet for me. And so I fired away over a hundred product ideas to my team members Wow. while I was in China. And so now what I'm doing is when I'm now that I'm back, I'm digging into those product ideas and I'm evaluating them. I'm going deeper into the, the dive and I'm looking at the competition. I'm looking at the types of different products that different sellers are, are are selling what's working, what's not working, how good are they at Amazon and really running through that evaluation process. And then I've, I've incorporated AI in the product development lately, cool. which has been absolutely a game changer. It's a, it's insanity. So while I was at the factories, I was, I would, I would use chat GPT, um, to maybe help me with some prompts into mid journey. Okay. And then I'm using mid journey to get product concepts and that I, that I love, and I'm just digging through until I get kind of 80 or 90% of the way there. And then I'm, I'm showing it to the factory and I'm like, Hey, I want to do something like this instead of this current bestseller that is, isn't as good. Um, what does it cost to do that custom? Right? So I'm learning all around additional customizations because for the most part, I would kind of work with what the engineers at the factories were already doing. I wasn't deep into customization. I would just beat everyone with better content, with better keywords, um, and, and, and SEO, right? I would just beat them on the data, but now I can beat them on the, 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 the product design, dude, that's, that's bonkers, right? Yeah. Like I can, I was running pick food tests with concepts straight out of mid journey wow. and crushing the best sellers in a bunch of, in a bunch of, uh, uh, niches. Okay. And I'm like, 
these are competitive niches that I normally may have stayed away from, but now that I know I'm going to convert better, once I execute on this new design, it's on, right? Like I'm going to be able to come in. So it's a little bit scary because if anyone at MDS is listening to this or any big seller is listening to this and you've got a best seller, I'm not talking about the supplements guys. Like you guys, you guys are on in a, in a world of your own. I'm talking about just products. If you've got a, like a CPG product and you're a best seller right now and you're not iterating, if you're not going faster, if you're not improving your design, your business is in danger. Yeah. Like you're, you've got people coming up right now that are already testing concepts that are probably beating yours with pick food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good point, man. I've been looking at like product life cycle stuff a little bit and I've always had like the idea to improve stuff like that will kind of come to me very easily. But executing yeah. on that is not easy. I mean, it's it costs gonna, a lot I'm of. I'm gonna do a whole class on it uh, in the inner circle. I'm gonna do a whole master class about nice. the entire process. So it'll be, it'll be everything from like how I'm prompting ChatGPT because I found several strategies there, and you get different results from each. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna walk through a product design example with Midjourney, and then straight into testing. And then I'm gonna talk about the customization costs. So. Everything from regular molding, injection molding to soft goods. Like what, what can you expect to have to pay the factory to do these types of products? That way everyone's got the toolkit right there. Go, yeah. just start creating and go fast, right? Are you familiar with the, um, I had a call yesterday with one of the brands. We, we resell their product. They came to us and wanted us to launch a product for them and, and they sent, uh, it was a sample. They have to do injection molding, but they had something done first that allowed us to approve the design, but it wasn't as expensive. I can't I can't remember the term he used. Probably a three D probably a three D model. Maybe it's probably three D printing. Yeah, yeah. I feel like he called it something. Because if you take a CAD and then you can three D print something and then you can get it most of the way there. You're better off doing a lot of that digitally though. Like it's crazy. If you can three D render a concept, that was what was missing before. Because I would tell, I would have in my mind what I kind of want, and my you have to work with designers that are a pain in the ass to work with. They're expensive, and you have you know they give you a concept that's not quite what you wanted, and it doesn't quite work. I can just keep reprompting the AI to just give me better, different, slightly different. You know, start with this and and go and yeah, and you can get like I said, you can get eighty, ninety percent away there, and that's good enough to test. Yeah, nice. You got any uh, any prompts uh, you would share with us that, that's working for you? I've heard of the chat GPT to mid-journey flow, but I haven't messed with it myself. So I think the biggest thing is that you describe the material, the product, like in the beginning. So it's like it's a hard, like if I was doing a, um, a diaper bag, it would be like it's a soft, um, you know, soft uh, felt type material or um, bag that has leather accents. And then, then you, then you're more specific about the, the, what the product is. It's a diaper bag backpack. Uh, the, and then you, you tell the like the next step would be, you can, you can prompt the colors. So you're like, uh, it's uh, gray with uh, brown leather accents. And then you prompt more specific. So you're like, uh, it has, um, two side pockets and a front pocket. And then, then you describe more in detail about that front pocket. So the front pocket opens up wide. You can see. Yeah, uh, what's inside and then you can describe maybe what's inside but you know like th the biggest thing is like you have to keep iterating your prompt based on the fact that what it understands you have mm -hmm. to it's like talking to a little kid and the kid tells you what it understands and then you're like okay well let me get a little bit more granular here or more specific so once you have all these elements then you can start to get get into it more nice cool yeah, I've, I've played around with Midjourney a little bit. I haven't done too much with it. I I heard you could like reverse engineer it now. You can like give it an image, and it'll describe it or something. And people are using that to help with the prompts. I haven't used that that function. I I start with an image sometimes. So I I'm also this is huge. Um, the last couple nights, late last night, I was using it for this. I found one of our best sellers, the, one of the lifestyle images was not up to par, right? It just did not meet our quality standards. And I hate that. So I have uh, six people on my, my design team and content team in, in, uh, in China. I've got a video guy. I've got a couple photographers, a couple designers, and a, you know, I've got a lead designer. And I sent them this image and I'm like, this is 
and they've been on vacation for last week. I sent it like four days ago. They're like, oh, we'll get to it when we get back. I was pissed. Like, <laughs> I hate that. Anyway, so I was like, all right, um, this is not up to standard. None of this, this type of image should never, ever be published on any of our products. Like it was just obviously Photoshopped. I hate that. So I was like, make this better. And so they, they, they attempted to do it better. And I'm like, you know what? Give me a minute. And I went into mid journey and I took a picture of someone doing the activity like um that i wanted them to design into google i just went into google images and then i grabbed that image that was in a similar style of what i wanted i put it into mid journey and i used that as a reference point okay. and then i started to describe what i wanted and i was getting back and then you have to add like the quality the maybe the camera that it's shot with the depth from the angle like you you, you get more you get more specific on that but I, I, I got, I don't know, five or six awesome lifestyle images that I gave them. By the time I went to bed, that image was updated and a hundred times better. It looks amazing now. And it was done so fast to where like you, you can't tell it's Photoshopped anymore. And this would be something that would cost me thousands of dollars to get a photo shoot done. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> That's insane. I got to play around with that more, man. That's cool that that's what you're like, you're, you're focused on at, at the moment that like you have the, you know, the space to well, focus on. That's the lever that's like going to that. drive the most business for us, right? Yeah. Like, like drive our business forward, which is the product selection, the development, the design, the conversion, right? So if I'm helping with, if I'm going through and I'm auditing the, the content, the images for our, for our existing products, that just bumps conversion. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be a lever. And then the other lever is just new product development, which is, um, if I'm involved, the batting average is significantly better, right? Mm -hmm. Like over half the time we're going to reorder it 60, you know, or 80% of the time we're not going to lose money on it. So I'm, I'm comfortable investing and in going into more aggressive categories now. Yeah. Nice. The best thing I figured out with chat GPT so far was like, uh, I was trying to get some reporting done in Slack daily reports from data and click up. And, um, I was like how I was asking how I can get it from one place to another. It talked about Zapier. I was like, yeah, I already know about that. I was like, can I do it with a Python script? I've never done scripting or anything. Right. Like I just, and it was like, oh yeah, you can do it with that. And I was like, all right, how can I do it? And it was like, go here, set this up and get this account and use this code. It gave me the code. And like, I was like, this is crazy, man. I mean, I just, yeah, I've been thinking about this for 10 years and I just figured it out in like five minutes, <laughs> uh, by having a conversation with Chad GPT. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I incredibly powerful. Uh, I know nothing about coding either. So for it to tell you, okay, now go here and paste it there and do this. And so like, give me, give me step-by-step -step instructions on yeah. how to do it and it'll do it for you. It's, yeah. it's insane. It's a, uh, it's crazy, man. So I'm, I'm looking forward to being able to play around with that stuff more. Um, well, man, it's super cool to hear like what you're, what you're working on these days and, and just, uh, you know, grinding away on in, in the office. Um, that that's cool stuff. How, how do you split your time between like your business, your Amazon business, uh, seller systems and data dive, like what's going on with that, uh, situation. It's great. Uh, we have a few a players on, on both sides. Like our, uh, our CTO is phenomenal. He's, he's like slash COO. He, he's basically co COO with Jennifer, mm -hmm. um, because we we're split. Right. And so, um, we have Anthony who's, who's awesome. Uh, he, he's lead leading sales and business, business development. Uh, for data dive and seller systems, like he's helping with content and everything on that side too. Um, and we've got, uh, you know, our, our lead designer who's taking more involvement in, uh, Natasha, who's taking more involvement in project management and is, is awesome. So, you know, and, and we're, we're really good at, at the, the, the team that we have is really strong, but we probably need to go from three or four strong players that we have to, um, six, right. And so we're stretched a little thin, we're scaling really fast and we need to just keep growing. So we just retained a marketing firm. We just had a meeting right before this one with a marketing agency. We've never run ads really for seller systems. And that that's going to change coming up in the next you know month or so to where we're figuring out how we do the tracking, how we get a return on ad spend, how we, the different funnels and flows for different, um, you know, avatars. 
because people want to learn about Amazon for many different ways and already have many different levels of experience. So MDS guys come in and they want to just fill knowledge gaps and be a part of another community with regular calls. They might want to put their team members into it. Um, and then you've got guys that started but failed because they, they went to the wrong course that gave them terrible information. And now we can kind of help them write the ship because they don't want to give up. They see the potential of it. And then you got new people. And then beyond the entrepreneurs, and then you've got beyond the entrepreneurs, you've got the people that want to work in the space that we're going to start really helping as well. Mm -hmm. So we're doing um, what we're calling a uh, e-commerce career accelerator. So we're adding like the certificate programs. So just figuring out how to build the team up to execute on the vision uh, and the goals for all three entities, basically our brands, uh, seller systems and data dive. And then Data Dive's funnel really is ed the education piece. It's interesting that Seller Systems is by far the best way to bring people in to use Data Dive because yeah. these are serious sellers that are getting the right education that have a higher success rate than any other course, and so they're gonna they're gonna stay members, right? They're gonna stay signed up to Data Dive, and so running ads for just a straight software is very difficult, right? It's very expensive, and and the churn rate's insane. But, um, you know, if you lead with value, you lead with education, it's a lot better. So, yeah, what's next for us is is pretty lofty, but we definitely need to grow the team. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're working, you know, 78 hours a week. We're also doing a ton more events um, now that things are back open. We've got uh, an ambassador network for the inner circle. So we're going to have different uh, meetups firing off every month in a bunch of different cities. Um We've got uh, big sponsored events that we do around every other event. So like this week and next week in Salt Lake City, we're doing Dave and Busters, uh, free gameplay and snacks and a couple drink tickets. Nice. That's going to be fun. Seller, seller Summit, we're going to do axe throwing in Fort Lauderdale uh, later in the month. But if we do one or two events like that every month around other big events, plus we have all those meetups going on, we're really helping to build the community. They're getting together that magic's happening where people are helping each other that abundance mentality that networking and you you are who you surround yourself with so the more often you're around these people uh and the less often you're around the people you kind of grew up with that are stuck in dead-end jobs or are not happy with their lives and negative and drawing you back the better for you so hopefully we can help people level up which is you know the whole premise of mds the whole premise of the inner circle yeah right? I told my wife the other day, I was like, babe, we just got to start doing like really cool stuff in the area, like put together a really cool event that, you know, the types of people we're trying to attract would come to. <laughs> um, that's cool that you're doing, you know, the Dave and Buster's thing and all that. Like, I would just be so pumped if stuff like that was happening um, over here. A lot of entrepreneurs here, but it's like old school entrepreneurs. Um, yeah. you know, not like did you know, they're not, my buddy just moved up into your area. I got to connect you. Okay. Um, where are you at exactly? Virginia beach. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He just moved up to North Carolina. I okay. Think. Uh, so he's not too far. Um, nice. how far from the DC area are you? I'm about four hours. Okay. Yeah. Not too We're far. We're going to do something in that greater area. Okay. So it's going to be a drive away, uh, for sure. So nice. we'll do something. I don't know what they call that tri-state area with Maryland and, and Virginia and um, D.C. But yeah. Some we'll people do something call it Delmarva. Del I've heard of it called Delmarva. But he's from yeah. down here. And the, the startup community, he was a part of the startup community in Miami. And he's an investor. And ex like he has an accelerator and a, a coaching program. And I said, how's the startup scene up there in North Carolina? He says, not existing. <laughs> it's not. He's like, he's like, it's not tech startups. It's like random guy that owns uh you know an oil company or or like something and i'm like yeah that's not the same thing. yeah it's not the same yeah it's not <laughs> yeah he's like he's like there's an eo chapter and it's like someone's got a trucking company yeah and it's like that we don't speak the same language if yep. you're a tech startup entrepreneur or a coach like it's like that's great like business is business and that it boils down to the same thing but He's not as interested in being yeah. around that, I don't think. I, I went through the same thing, went to an EO uh, meeting, and I was like, ah, it's, you know, not my thing, not coming back. <laughs> uh, but I know they have great chat. You know, it, it's different based great on where you live. Great depending yeah. on where you are yeah. and who's in it, right? Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of our friends that are big, big part of EO. And then once you get to a certain level, YPO becomes, you know, the next level, which is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to maybe join them. There's right. a few guys that I know that are in YPO that are, that tell me it's, it's where you got to go. Yeah. 
Well, Brandon, man, you've um, you know, I've I've watched you do some some really cool stuff over the past few years. Um, you know, I, I know it's not easy to accomplish all these things. I know you're putting in a lot of a lot of hours, probably sacrificing some some personal time and things like that. Um, like when you reflect back on all these things, um, like what are some of the challenges that you're you're grateful for that you've had to go through uh, and overcome over the past few years? Dude, all of it, man. Um, if I look back at myself as an entrepreneur three years ago, it's unrecognizable. Like I can see why I struggled so much, and and even I, I imagine the 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 mindset that I've taken is that even three years from now, I'm gonna look back at myself today and I'm gonna say, man, I still didn't know shit. And I hope that that's always the way I feel. Is like. Like three years, I'm going to keep leveling up. I'm going to keep getting better. And and a lot of that was the executive coaching we've been doing for the last two and a half years. We've we've invested over $200,000 wow. in executive coaching. Um, and just yesterday, I had a coaching session where the primary focus has really turned into me as a CEO. Man, I'm not good at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just... You know, it's gotten to the point where it's uh, I I'm I'm trying to get better at the at the things I need. Like there's, so so the the philosophy that my coach has, which is f phenomenal, I think, is that you know you know what your superpower is, maximize that, go yeah. all in there, and then that's opposite from a lot of, what a lot of people say is, which is work on your weaknesses. And it's like uh, what is going to be far more productive for you is is like something you're at thirty percent bringing it to fifty percent, or something you're at one hundred and ten percent bringing it to two hundred percent, right? Mm -hmm. So you really want to double down on what you're great at, and identify the things you're not great at, and then really figure out. But there's even things that I need to get better at for sure that I'm uh, that I'm working on. It's more around organization and uh, scheduling meetings that matter, engaging with the team on a regular basis, making sure that we're, we have scorecards and that we're moving in the right direction on a regular basis, those regular check-ins. Um, so I know a lot of the guys in, M uh, MDS, uh, love, uh, EO, uh, mm -hmm. EOS and, um, it's similar, right? I think all the business management practices are, are the same shit, just with different names. Yep. So it set a goal and work backwards and figure out what those leading activities are. It's bottom line. Yeah. So I'm, um, yeah, I, uh, for me, it's um, the challenges have always been like hiring, uh, training, making sure that uh, people are being able to convey my vision and make it actionable, uh, creating those leading activities so that uh, those those goals are achievable. Uh, without Jennifer and without uh, the like, the two of us work so well together because we balance each other on that on that you know wheel. Uh, it's it's without her there's no way we would have achieved everything we've achieved yeah it was great listening to her uh, i actually have her i have all my notes like i keep them right here on my desk from the thing <laughs> from the event yeah she's so <laughs> she's such an introvert and so soft-spoken that sometimes it's tough for people to connect with her um but if you sit down and take the time you'll get you'll you know it'll be so valuable right yeah. like she's She's just a wealth of knowledge. So, and I think that's um, important stuff. Like what you mentioned, leading activities. So, like I've been—is uh, that similar to leading indicators for KPIs? Um, it's slightly different. So, an activity would be like, what is it that you're doing on a daily basis that is moving uh, the business? Like that. Okay. That, so that is creating the leading uh, the leading indicators that so you can measure whether you're moving towards that goal that target right. So you guys so are actually the, tasking out the things that are are tied to the indicators as activities somewhat. Correct. Right? Okay. So just measuring isn't enough. So like if you the, the example that our coach gave, which I think is perfect for what you're asking, is uh, if you're trying to lose weight. If you're if you're KP if you're just measuring your weight every day, you're not actually um, you're not actually going to lose weight, right? Right. You're just, you're just measuring it. But if your leading activity is, um, count your calories, uh, and stay under 1500 or your leading activity is 10 minutes of exercise every day. And then you measure after, you know, a, ha a few days or every week, right? Like you're checking in regularly to see, did you, what percentage of the days did you actually exercise every for 10 minutes a day? 
Um, and what is your weight now versus your target weight? All right. Now, now you, now you see you're moving in the right direction and you've done those leading activities, but that allows you to adjust. So if your goal was to lose 10 pounds in eight weeks and you're tracking a little low and you're only going to lose eight pounds, maybe you need to increase your leading activity to 12 minutes of exercise a day. Right. So that's, that's kind of the, 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 the process nice. or thought, thought behind it. I like that. Yeah. That's, that's good advice. I think for everyone listening, like, you know, those, those are things we all should be paying attention to. You know, if you're, if your goal is to like grow your business or, you know, work less hours, I think, you know, that's a key, yeah. key part of the recipe to make it happen is, is focusing yeah. on those We're things. We're going to start doing more upper level business management training within the inner circle because it's needed right as you get to that level. Yeah. Um, is so some of the stuff that we're learning from the executive coach plus but applying it more towards enter um towards e-commerce and amazon and multi-channel like just you know the stuff that jennifer's teaching at at camp ecom and right. what we're going to teach in this year i think that there's an it's there's a need for actual course content and lessons on that right yeah for, especially for in the e-commerce field because the thing i keep running into is i'm like getting I'm drawing inspiration from other businesses that like have, you know, done what I'm trying to do, but like they did it in a different industry and it's kind of still got like that, the old school business stuff tied to it. And that's where I find myself hitting roadblocks. It's like, well, I have this idea that I can maybe do this function of a business differently because I'm in e-commerce. I have this technology to leverage. Like, how do I fit that in? And I think that's missing, you know, it's like the, the answer is you try it and see what happens, right? Like there's really no one else doing it. So, um, it would be great to have, have that available. Um, so what's coming up with camp Ecom? Like before we, uh, before we sign off here, like, let us know what's, what's coming up in the world of camp Ecom. Where can people learn more about that stuff? Yeah, we have campecom.com. We've got a pre-sale up there, so it's still super early bird. That'll be January. Okay. So you got plenty of time for that. Um, we'll start announcing it in the next month or so, start marketing it, get people excited about it. We're locking in a venue over the next uh, month as well. Nice. But it'll be three, it'll be, like I said, three different um, tracks that you can really spend two days. Um, you were, you were on the business management side, but what I was doing in the interactive side with in the fundamental side, which was, um, I would, I would teach a lesson and then I would break people into groups, small groups to actually do a work, a workshop together, like a group workshop together on that lesson. So it was like, learn, learn, do learn, learn, do. And every single time someone was speaking or I was speaking, you were handed an SOP, a worksheet, a case study. There was, it was as interactive as possible so that you're walking away with an example, a real example and actually getting to do it. So we, um, that was, that was the premise, right? If you're going to do workshops, you got to make it interactive. You got to have a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of experience, live experience doing it, not just someone speaking at you from the stage. So we're, uh, we're hoping to do a lot more of that this year, but go even more, more granular with pre-launch, post-launch and, uh, and the business management. Cool. Awesome, man. I'm looking forward to, it. I think I already signed up for the event. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> will be fun. We'll also yeah. throw in all the networking and fun stuff that adds, drives a lot of value as well. We, and that we was fun. Yeah. I, I had fun at that event. It, it was cool. It definitely was a good time. Uh, well, Dude, always good to see you. Yeah, man. man. Thanks for coming on, Brandon. It, it is really good to chat with you and catch up. I mean, it's uh, been a while since we sat and talked for, for 40 minutes. So <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> it, man. Thanks for hopping on and um, we'll talk again soon, man. Thank you. Appreciate you. Bye.